All right, we are good. Now we're gonna share screen. Here we go. Wonderful. So welcome, good afternoon officially. We're just over 12. Today is going to be a short but jam-packed webinar about low and no down payment financing options. For those that I haven't met yet, my name is Nicole Kittredge. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am a mortgage professional uh, with over 17 years experience. I do find this job to be very rewarding, especially after the hard work of budgeting, saving, and then getting to home ownership. I actually had one of my favorite clients, I call her, reach out recently. She took nine years to buy her first house because she had a lot of stuff going on. I was so proud of her. She bought a two family. She refinanced when rates are low and now she's ready to buy another property. So wow. with my length of time in the business, yes, I'm not going anywhere, whether it takes you six months or nine years, um, I'll be here to help. So I work for a company called Envoy Mortgage. In my opinion, the best company to work for, we're a direct lender. So we don't do checking, savings, anything else. We specialize in mortgages and we do them really well. In February, I celebrated my five-year anniversary here. It really did fly by. And I like to add this tidbit. I purchased my first property back in 2005. We had roommates for many years. And today it's still one of the best investments I ever made, even though we definitely didn't love having roommates. <laughs> so let's jump right in. When you think about home buying, you may know where you wanna live, what type of property you like. You may have pets and say, you know what? There's no way I'd do a condo. We need a yard. You might look, know when you would like to move, but you really have to know how much can you afford. And that's where a mortgage professional comes into the picture. Step one is going to be apply for your pre-approval. So with Envoy, you're going to do that right on my website. We do offer very quick, very detailed pre-approvals for um, qualified clients. And when you apply, you actually get access to the Envoy application, the mobile app. And it allows you to update your letters on the fly if you need them. Say it's a Saturday, you saw the perfect home, you can go right in and update your letter. It also allows you access to mortgage calculators, which once you're pre-approved, are a great way to figure out if you can pay down a little extra. Maybe after the first six months, if you're comfortable with the payment, these calculators are very motivating to see how much quicker you can pay down the loan, even paying $50 extra a month. So step two, Application complete, you've done it, you've gotten your letter, commence house hunting. And really this is a shame, but it does happen. I've had clients come to me and say, I got pre-approved, I'm house hunting, but I really don't know anything. And within a day of working with me, they understand what their payment is, what the closing costs are. And that's really what it's all about. You can get a letter, but it's just a piece of paper. Ultimately our goal is to educate you so that you're comfortable Moving forward, you understand the numbers and there's no surprises. Nobody likes surprises, really ever. I guess some people like good surprises, but nobody likes bad surprises, I should say. So step two is a fully underwritten pre-approval. And in this competitive market, which we're shifting to a buyer's market, and we'll talk a little bit about that, it's really important to basically put your best foot forward. So at Envoy, at no cost to you, we can collect all of your paperwork, get it submitted up front, and then you will get a fully underwritten pre-approval. It makes your life much less stressful because you've done all of the heavy lifting up front and you know, I'm good to go. I'm approved. All I really need to do now is find a house. Um, if anyone has questions throughout, please feel free to throw a hand up in the chat, unmute yourself and ask by all means. All right. Just checking to see if anyone else tried to come in. We are good. So step three, you have your pre-approval letter. Do you understand it? So with your pre-approval, it's good because you're going to know how much house you can afford based on what the lender is willing to lend you. You should receive details on how the payment works, loan programs available to you, and which ones are going to be better than the other. So there's really over 100 loan options out there, and my job is to walk you through which one is going to be the best for you. Uh, we have someone joining. Welcome, Amina. 
You should also receive details on loan program specifics. So for example, FHA, if you do three and a half percent down, you're paying what they call mortgage insurance premium for the life of the mortgage. Some people get into the FHA mortgage and they don't realize that that's the case. So working with a mortgage professional who explains the pros, the cons of each program is going to be important. And I should have almost put this in bold, but what closing costs, escrows, and prepaid items are. This goes back to a client who may get a letter and go out house hunting thinking they only need 3% down, but in reality, you need closing costs, even costs outside of the mortgage, such as paying a home inspector. So it's important that you are educated on all of these things. And obviously that's something that we on, at Envoy and I work on a great team called the Envoy Mortgage Medway team, pride ourselves on providing very detailed information so there's nothing left to question. We will go over a timeline of the process. So let's say you are ready to go out this weekend and look at properties. With having a timeline, you know when money leaves your pocket and why. The do's and don'ts, so I will give you some information on what not to do. That's kind of sometimes more important, such as don't open new accounts. If no one ever tells you that, you don't know any better. And lastly, numbers for specific properties. So as you're house hunting, you may want the specific numbers on, say, a condo compared to a single family. Adding that condo fee can really jump your payment. And that's something, unless you see it kind of in writing right in front of you, you may not realize. So step four is budgeting. And if you came to me and said, Nicole, I just signed a lease. I'm not ready to move for a year. We would kind of skip right to step four and focus on figuring out what can you afford? So rent doesn't necessarily equal mortgage. There's a lot of other expend expenditures that come along with owning a home. I have some clients that are closing next month. They're excited. They're getting a pellet stove. We actually happen to have a pellet stove. It's wonderful, and it'll probably be cheaper than other home heating, but it does cost a couple thousand to stock the pellets for the winter. So that's something that you is kind of an upfront expense uh, to get the best price. As a lender, we're going to analyze something called your debt to income ratio or DTI for short. When you budget, you have the opportunity to do your own debt to income ratio. And I would much rather you say, Nicole, my goal is to spend no more than 2,500 a month and we can back into what price point you should be looking at. In this market, that's gonna be important as well because as rates change, it does impact your buying power. Um, so debt to income ratio is something we're doing as a lender. I think consumers should definitely work on budget as almost like a top priority before you're ready to buy. A little bonus slide here, credit. So credit plays a big role in qualifying, not just for mortgage, but for anything. Even when you're going to rent a property, they're checking your credit. When you're going to get a car loan, a credit card, the better the credit scores you have, you're going to save money on everything. So there's tips that I will provide to you when I see your report. Um, and if you have credit that needs some help, I have experts that I recommend out that are wonderful. But just some basics. So you can check your credit score for accuracy at annualcreditreport.com. It's free. They don't give you the, the scores themselves, but they give you the data in the report. You can actually pay a little extra for the scores. And it's a great way to keep your credit in check throughout the year. So there's Experian. Equifax and TransUnion. Um, every once in a while, it's not a bad idea to check one, wait a few months, check the other, just to make sure everything's on track and you haven't been uh, compromised in any way. Uh, that's a free way to do it and it doesn't count as a hard inquiry. Next bullet, if anyone wants to take a stab at this, generally don't close accounts. Does anyone have any feedback as to why? And Beth, you can, you can certainly jump in you want a long history yes awesome sarah so the longer the credits open the better it is for your scores and there's a little tip here and I, i'd recommend again you speak with the credit expert but i've had him recommend to clients two people applying together one may not have strong credit or much credit if you get added as an authorized signer to a well-established account, it can shoot up your scores. So when you open new accounts, your score is gonna go down because of having a hard inquiry, because of having limited credit over two years and up is best. 
Um, so that's a little tip for you. I'm a big fan of free online banking. They pay the postage. I set up minimum payments in all my accounts so that if, God forbid, I got in an accident and wasn't available, I know my $30 is going to TJ Maxx. My minimum payment's covered. And utilization. This is another big one that we are never educated about. Utilization has to do with how much you owe in relation to the high credit limit on your account. So on that TJ Maxx card I mentioned, my limit's 1,000. If I was to owe $500, I'm 50% utilized. If the holidays come around and now I'm up to 1,000, I'm maxed out and my scores are gonna drop. A good target is 50% and a great target is 30% and an even better target is paying your accounts off monthly. So really this is something that you have control over. Um, I don't always recommend this unless you're great at managing your credit, but when you get offered an increase, take it. The more available credit you have and the less balances you have, you should see your scores rise. So now we're gonna jump into what can make your head spin. And I just wanna remind you that we're here to walk you through all the different loan programs and which may be the best for you. So I'm gonna do a brief introduction here. Conventional 3% down. So this is a kind of like the best loan option out there, conventional. It's Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, you may have heard of them. And they are the least cost out of most loan options, quickest to close, very competitive rates for good credit applicants. So they have a 3% first time buyer program that has no income limits. They also have Home Ready, which is income restricted and Freddie Mac has Home Possible, 3% down income restricted. So if you're not working with a mortgage professional that knows to check, do you fit into one of those programs, you may get stuck in the conventional 3% paying a higher rate than if you just took a little online course and closed with um, Home Ready or Home Possible. So those are some great 3% down options. Mass Dreams, has anyone heard of Mass Dreams? I'm very excited about Mass Dreams. It's rolling out in October, so right around the corner. And it is for disproportionately impacted communities. And there's a list of them there on the slide. I can certainly get this out to you, but it, if you fit within the income limits and you buy in one of these towns, you can get up to 50,000 to cover down payment and closing costs. If you fit in a little bit lower income limit, you can get up to 30,000. Let's say you're not buying in one of those um, towns, that's okay. Mass housing is actually available across the state, still income restricted, but they have up to a 15,000 down payment assistant, assistance. So basically the thing about these programs is you couldn't really get them accepted the past three years because it's been so competitive. The market is shifting. So I'm very excited this is rolling out because I think people will actually have an opportunity to buy homes with these awesome programs. There's also a bunch of bullets there about different mass housing options. So again, this is where your mortgage professional comes in and says, okay, you're a veteran. Let's make sure you also get the, the mass housing veterans benefits. Or you want to buy a multifamily, we have to go over the specifics in regards to that. Mass housing does allow multis, a little bit more down payment requirement, and you have to take a landlord course, for example. So that's a lot in one breath about a whole variety of different loan programs. Has anyone heard of Chinoa? I don't think I, I certainly didn't until a few years ago. We closed a few before the pandemic, and now they're back. So Chinoa is an FHA program. So there's some positives to Chinoa. There's no income restriction to this program. You pay a higher rate. If you fit within part of the area median income limits, you get a better rate, but they have a forgivable three and a half percent. That's the, the rep said they're doing mostly those right now. Second, where if you pay on time for three years, they forgive that three and a half percent they gave you, which allows you to do a zero down loan. Now with FHA, there's property restrictions, there's mortgage insurance for the life of the loan, as I mentioned earlier. So if I have a client that can qualify for Mass, House, Mass Housing Dreams or Chinoa, we're definitely gonna go the Mass Dreams route. So there's some information on the slide. Again, I'm happy to send this out to you or send you specifics on any of the programs we fly through here. So government loans, FHA, VA, USDA are actually all government loans. Government loans are a little more expensive stricter property require requirements, but can be a great way to get into a property. So USDA 
is a zero down option. It is income restricted and area restricted. Different than mass housing, which looks at the applicant's income to see if you're fitting within the income limits. To know, I mean, USDA looks at the household income. So they're gonna look at everyone in the household, even if they're not applying in the mortgage loan to see if you fit within the limits. VA is for veterans, they're eligible veterans. It's a wonderful program with uh, no PMI. And FHA definitely comes up throughout many of these slides because FHA is flexible. They allow as little as three and a half percent down on a multifamily. This is really unheard of. Conventional is much higher. Mass housing, it's pretty difficult to qualify for multi, although my favorite client actually did buy her first two family via mass housing many years ago. Um, but FHA really, for people, a lot of kids nowadays want to do the investor. They want to buy and live in it and flip. FHA is a way to get that done, especially on a multi. So that was a ton of loan programs. It really doesn't even touch the top of what we offer with many brokers we work with behind the scenes. But I think the big takeaway today is that the market shifted and you may have the opportunity or your loved ones may have the opportunity to get into a house with maybe a few thousand in the bank with one of these programs. And if they're not ready at this moment, if they follow the steps of budgeting, working on credit, they should be able to get there sooner than later. So I think most would agree, we were talking a little bit before we started recording about the market changing and maybe we were in a seller's market and we're quickly shifting to a buyer's market. So we're hearing of listings reducing prices. I'm talking to realtors who are putting properties on and they're not getting showings. They're used to putting a, a well-priced home on, getting multiple offers, and in the past two years, putting any home on and getting multiple offers. Um, so this, is, this benefits you as a buyer. What can you do to differentiate yourself, even in this market, let's assume, you put an offer on a property and there's someone else with 3% down and you're at zero down. Um, what, can, what do you think you can do to differentiate yourself? Hint, I did talk about it at the beginning. And a pre-approval. Yes, not just a pre-approval, a fully and underwritten. <laughs> yes, Beth, you know. So that fully underwritten pre-approval will allow the listing agent to tell the sellers, listen, I, you're the buyer putting the offer on the home, even though they're zero down, they've already gone through underwriting. All we need is a contract and appraisal and we're gonna be able to close. The other offer may have a little more down, but they didn't go through underwriting up front. So that's one way to set yourself up for success if you end up um, either in a multiple offer situation or if you are zero down, and let's say you are the only offer, it's gonna help the seller feel much more comfortable and confident moving forward, taking your offer, knowing you've already gone through the underwriting process. All right, it is impossible to learn about home buying in one webinar. Really, uh, I think it takes a team of going over budgeting, document collection, which I have a great team member who goes through all the paperwork, my processor who gets a file buttoned up and gets it over to underwriting, my underwriting center, which is in Connecticut, and of course me or the loan professionals on my team who walk you through what you qualify for. So hopefully you did get some good takeaways today. I work pretty much seven days a week because in this crazy real estate market, if you need numbers, we're here for you. So feel free to reach out anytime. Feel free to unmute yourselves if you have any immediate questions we can help with because I do realize that was a lot of information. <laughs> can I hit you with a couple, Nicole? Yes, please do, Andy. Excellent. Um, this was awesome, by the oh, way. Good clearly shows the need for experts in any and all fields because I did not know there were even 15 loan options, never mind 100 and beyond. So oh gosh, um, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, no, this is excellent. Re regarding the Mass Dreams program, uh, is that, did I understand correctly that that's, say you got a married couple that are also, uh, both of them could potentially be first time home buyers, neither of them yeah. have bought anything. But say only one spouse applied since there was like a discrepancy in income, right? That might be advantageous to yes. them. So if I have two applicants apply yeah. and their income's over combined, but we can remove one applicant and they qualify, we can proceed. 
Excellent. And now that's I haven't, the program is rolling out in October, unless they put any caveats in, that's yeah. always the way mass housing has been. And we've absolutely gotten loans closed that way where I'm like, you know what, we're going to take Cobar off because let's take advantage of the mass housing. In this market yeah. lately, we haven't been able to do that because it's been really hard to get mass housing accepted. I think we're going to see a big swing the other way where buyers are going to have more opportunity. Okay. And then with the, uh, it says primary residence only, if it was a multifamily that they lived in as a primary residence. That's primary that, all day long. That's still primary, but yep. if it was a pure multifamily investment property, not going to qualify for mass dreams. Yep. Uh, correct. They're, so FHA, VA, USDA, mass housing, none of them do investor loans. Okay. It's only conventional and a, th a two, three, and four unit with conventional requires 25% down to be an investor. 25% Yes. Okay. So that's something that's a shock to people when they call me and they're like, I'd love to get into an investment property. And I, you know, what's a down payment? Well, if you're not going to live in it, 25% down. Okay, I understand. But if you live in it, it's the same. What's that, Christy? But if you live in it, it's the same as if it were a one resident. It's not actually. So conventional is a risk-based pricing model. Um, on a two unit, it's 15% down. Three and four is 20%, or it's actually 25%. Three and four is 25, I believe. Um, so is that right, Beth? I think you 20. can do 20. I think you can do 20. I think you Three can do 20, four. yeah. I always double check these because they like to change them on us. Um, yeah, but even 15% came back on a two unit, which is nice. That was great. The next best thing is going to be going mass housing, 5% down. And then uh, from there, which you can, it could be considered even better, but it's higher costs and fees is FHA. So FHA allows three and a half percent down if you occupy, but you're paying an upfront mortgage insurance premium of 1.75%. That's non-refundable. And you're paying PMI for the life of the loan. So the good news is statistically, most people only stay in a home five to seven years. So if you get in FHA three and a half percent down, especially someone who got in in the past few years, they gained a ton of equity. Um, even my team member, Wendell, he bought a two unit um, and he was shocked at how he bought a, a condo first. He came and met me in the office, joined my team. Then he bought a two unit and the equity he's gained in the past few years is just incredible. He actually now owns an eight unit in Connecticut. Um, I'm really proud of him. He's a great, <laughs> he's doing a great job. Any other questions, Andy? Oh yeah, I got a bunch, but I'm probably just going to send the clients your way. Can you send out this we presentation? We have time. Let's see. It's 26. Yes, I can send this to you. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Do you want to go with the questions? Uh, like, yeah, I guess just to, to double down and clarify for the on the multifamily and say it was going to be pure investment uh, property. Is there a program where you can get less than fifteen or twenty percent no. down? Okay. So twenty five percent is the minimum. There is something called the hard money lender. So I'm not a hard money lender. I really don't recommend them because it's kind of like the loan shark when you think of it. Yep. You, can, you can find these hard money lenders to lend on a wide variety of options, but you're paying through the nose and rates, um, et cetera. So they do exist out there, but it's definitely not mainstream lending. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I appreciate it. Okay. What would you recommend to someone who wants to buy a multifamily and live in it long-term? Long-term? Yeah. I mean, if you don't have the down, the down payment, get in with FHA. And hopefully in the future, um, you'd have an opportunity to refinance. It kind of makes me a little upset when I see advertisements that say, buy now, you can always refinance down the line. Well, there's no crystal ball to say rates are going to be low in the next five years. Statistically, the market goes and you might have an opportunity to refinance. But we're now at more historical averages for rates. What we saw the past few years was an anomaly, really. Um, but getting in with FHA, obviously, you wouldn't want to pay mortgage insurance for the life of the loan. So even if you re refinance to the same rate in the future, and hopefully we're able to reduce your term so you're not stretching it back out, when you pay a 30-year loan, you're almost paying for the house twice. So the goal in the long term is to try to reduce your loan and get from a 30 to a 20 to a 15, um, et cetera. Perfect. Well, those are really great questions, Andy. Any more for me? Thank you. No, but I got a couple of referrals for you. So I'll be sending Perfect. them. Perfect. 
So I actually, Andy Joyce and I have done a financial planning webinar, which is posted on the YouTube. Uh, the credit expert I mentioned and I have done a credit 101 webinar, which is on the YouTube, and this will be posted. So feel free to share with your friends who may benefit. Um, you know, sometimes we can't help but think the sky is falling when rates are going up, but it does open up opportunities like this. So it's not all bad. So thank you all for your time. Um, let me see, it's a little contact information here at the end. You should know where to find me. Um, I'm pretty accessible. So that's it. Thank you, Nicole. Thank You're you, welcome. Nicole. That was great. My, thank uh -huh. you. Thank you for the feedback. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.